Hello everyone, and we are back in week 10, and we're going to talk about chapter 6 in this video. And so for chapter 6, this will cover week 10 and week 11 for us. During week 10, you have three assignments as usual. You have to read the chapter, which is pages 299 to 307, watch this video, um, take notes on the PowerPoint, and then I'm going to have another video up where I do the green exercise, the checkpoint exercise from chapter 6 along with Test Your Understanding Part 1 to give us a little extra practice on how to look at supporting detail. Then make sure that you complete the Chapter 6 review cards on pages 311 to 312 and complete Chapter 6 review guide. Now Chapter 6 is available through the library, so if you didn't purchase the textbook, make sure that you email them with the correct page numbers that you need for Chapter 6. Remember all the chapter page numbers are listed um, under the content tab, um, click on overview and it'll be on the syllabus. And then for week 11, you've got two assignments. The first one is to read the selection 6.2, answer questions 1 through 20, plus respond in writing number one only, and then complete the chapter 6 test. Um, before we get started, let's take a quick look at the calendar just to see where we're at. So week 10 is November 16th through the 20th, and then week 11 is the 23rd through the 27th. Thanksgiving is on the 26th. Um, please note that after November 20th, um, any classes that we're meeting on campus will all be online for the rest of the semester. So for our class, CCS 98, we're online for the rest of the semester. You never have to come back to campus for our class. But if you have a cl other class that has been meeting on campus after the 20th, they will no longer meet on campus. So make sure that you meet with your professors, you talk with them, of, and make sure you understand how the rest of that class period is going. Okay, so week 10 and 11 is chapter 6. Make sure this weekend, if you can, I know a lot of you are essential workers, you work in retail and fast food and things like that. If you can get one day where you can just take a break from all your schoolwork, that will give you some, a little mental relief before we come back after that break. And then when you come back after that week, we'll have two more weeks of classes, so week 12 and week 13. This will be um, for chapter 7, the last chapter in our book. Chapter 6, all of the assignments and tests are due December 6th, but make sure you get those turned in sooner. And make sure you're doing at least one assignment a week. If you're not, you're considered absent. And then chapter 7, uh, the work for it will be due December 16th. This week right here, the 14th through the 18th is finals week. Your final exam will be on COBRA, just like your tests have been. Um, it, you can start doing it the 14th of December. It is due by midnight on the December 18th, okay? And then we're done with this semester. So we've got a little ways to go, but we're almost there. All right, so let's get started with our PowerPoint for Chapter 6. And so for chapter six, we're identifying the supporting details in our um, paragraphs. And so I have a couple of um, pictures here on the screen that I like to use when trying to teach students the difference between the main idea and the supporting details. So with the main idea and supporting details, think of it like a table or even an umbrella. So the table part is your main idea. That's where you set everything on. That's your main idea. But the main idea needs support. It needs these table legs. And the table legs are the support. Okay? So that's what the supporting details do. They support your main idea. They give evidence to prove that it's correct. Sometimes you might think of a paragraph in a textbook like a hamburger too. I use this icon when I teach developmental English. So your main idea, think of, the, think of it as the buns. Remember, a main idea could be in the beginning, middle, or end. But it's all that stuff in the middle, all the good stuff. That, that's our supporting detail, okay? And that can always be different, okay? Depending on what you want on your burger, okay? So that's what we're looking at um, in chapter six. So a paragraph needs three main things. So one, it needs your topic. That was chapter three. Remember, we had four clues to help us pick out the topic of a paragraph. So you're gonna look to see if the paragraph had a title or a heading. 
if it had anything in special print, if there are any words that got repeated over and over again, or any words that got replaced by a pronoun. Okay, so those were clues to help us figure out what or who we're talking about in that paragraph. That's our topic. And then the second thing a paragraph needs is a main idea. All right, we had our stated and implied main ideas. Remember, chapter four was the stated main idea. It had your topic plus the most important point the author wanted to make about that topic. Okay, it was one sentence that the author wrote. It could be at the beginning, the end, or in the middle of the paragraph, but it was a statement that they, the author made that you picked out. But then don't forget chapter five with the implied main idea. That was something that the author did not write and you had to create on your own. You had to formulate it on your own, okay? So that was a sentence that you picked out based on what was in that paragraph. That was the topic plus the most important point. And then finally, we're gonna look at the supporting details. That's the, the third main thing that a paragraph has. And supporting details are additional information in the paragraph that helps you understand the main idea completely. They're gonna be known as support or details. Those two words will be used interchangeably. So what are examples of what that looks like? So if you're reading in a paragraph and you have anything like names, dates, places, statistics, results of research studies, descriptions, explanations, examples, all of those are supporting details, okay? When you get really specific, that's the supporting detail. So things to keep in mind. You don't wanna confuse supporting details with the main idea, okay? Supporting details are related to the main idea, but are not the same thing. So sp supporting details are specific, whereas main ideas express a general point. So remember back in chapter four, and five, we talked about in the gray box at the end of the chapter, knowing the difference between general and specific, okay? So our main idea, we needed to be general because you had all these different specific supporting details. And so every detail supports that main idea. So why is it important to identify these details? So one, the details explain or tell more about the main idea. When formulating the implied main idea, you are using the supporting details to create it. Okay, so remember we had, for example, in chapter five, that one um, paragraph about all the different value meals from like Burger King and Wendy's and stuff. Those were all specific examples, supporting details. And then we had to create ourselves what the topic and the main point about all of that was. And then listing the details after you read a textbook assignment can help you study more efficiently. So instructors often base test questions from the supporting details. It will help you mark textbooks effectively, helps to make study notes or create review cards. It helps to remember the material and identifying the details helps you grasp the pattern of organization of a paragraph. And we'll talk more about number three there in our last chapter, chapter seven. So what is the method for identifying supporting details? You want to read the paragraph first, determine the topic, remember the four clues from chapter three. You want to identify the stated or implied main idea. Okay, so remember stated is a p sentence that you actually pick out from that paragraph that the author has written that has the topic plus the most important point about that topic. Okay, so if that paragraph has a stated main idea, okay, pick out that stated main idea the rest of it is your supporting details, okay? If it doesn't have a stated idea, then you have to create an implied main idea. So if there's no stated main idea, everything in that paragraph is your supporting detail, okay? And we do have a comprehension monitoring question to help us identify supporting details. It's what, oops, sorry. What additional information does the author provide to help me understand the main idea completely? Okay, so you're looking for that additional information. So here's a trick you can use. So you can turn the main idea into a question. Remember the W question words? So who, what, where, when, why, or how? So here's an example. In any club or organization, the treasurer has several important responsibilities. So let's turn that into a question. What are the important responsibilities of the treasurers? And then you could list those one, two, three, four, five that you learn from the paragraph. Or you could turn the main idea into a two part question. So here's an example. The main idea says spreadsheets can serve small business owners in many ways. 
All right, so let's change this into two questions. So what are spreadsheets and how can they serve small business owners? Okay. So that's a little trick that you can use. Once you pull out that main idea, turn it into a question and the answer is going to be your supporting details. So sometimes the details are obvious based on the phrasing. So it might say there are many types of, there are five reasons that, two kinds of, there are several ways, some symptoms include, and then it's going to be a list of your supporting details. They can be introduced with signal words. So for example, first, second, next, also, in addition, moreover. Um, or if the author is listing things, you might see numbers. You might see letters or you might see bulleted points like I have here with these pink triangles. However, not every detail is introduced by a signal word. Also, a, signal sentence, a single sentence can contain more than one detail. Okay, so in one sentence you could list five different details. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that on page 301 in the blue box. Um, I'm running short on time in this video, so we are going to look at that blue box in video number two.